again, we'll just label the parts of this cell that we haven't already labeled. Although we need to remember that this prokaryote is missing stuff. There's stuff that isn't here that um, we did see in the other cells. All of our membrane bound organelles are missing and um, a nucleus is missing. So let's label some parts. First of all, I'm just very happy to announce that we can see flagella, one flagellum, and cilia, multiple cilia. Cilia are like little, again, both structures made out of cytoskeleton, but having different functions in different structures. So we have cilia covering the whole cell body. In the case of, remember the guy that we saw in the beginning who had the two stripes of cilia? So we can have different organizations of our cilia. We have ciliated cells in our, um, in our, respiratory tracts. We have this, it's called a mucociliary escalator. And we have these ciliated cells that actually um, move mucus hmm, up our respiratory tract so that we go <coughs> and swallow it down to our digestive tract. Oh, that's cool. With the intention of capturing prokaryotes and eating them before they infect our respiratory tract. Dude, we've got some pretty incredible strategies to protect ourselves from these guys. There are a bunch of prokaryotes that are actually um, not good for us and uh, cause diseases in us. Okay, but the flagellum and the stelia in a prokaryote or even in a protist are about um, movement. Remember I told you that they do have DNA but it's found in a general area in the cell and it's the general area isn't the nucleus because there's no membrane surrounding it. It's called the nucleoid. So it's just that general area. I don't know if you can see them, but I can. And I'm coloring them um, blue instead of orange for you. These are ribosomes. And what do you see in this weird, like, what, how many layers of stuff are we looking at here? I'm just going with the inside layer. What do you think the innermost layer on this cell is? And you can point to the plant cell for inspiration. All cells have this. It's a cell membrane. Prokaryotes have a cell membrane and it's the innermost structure. What else do you see? Well, I know someone out there is going to know the answer to this. I don't teach microbiology. And so I'm sure that there is a name for each one of these structures. This is the Wendy Riggs name for the two structures that are outside of the cell membrane, bacteria can have cell walls. Um, I'm gonna say just one cell wall because I'm gonna put those two things together. I feel like one of them is like a capsid or like, like they can also have this extra outer capsule um, that stains that you can see if you look through a microscope and you use a certain stain. But um, I, the thing I want you to hang on to, you'll learn all about that in micro if, if you take a micro class because you're headed into some sort of healthcare thing. Um, you'll learn all prokaryote anatomy. The thing I want you to hang on to is the fact that they have a cell wall. And that cell wall is totally protective for these guys makes it harder for us to break them apart or um, break them down. All right, I think that I don't see anything else. No endoplasmic reticulum, no um, 
no mitochondrion, no chloroplast. Um, oh, there's something I've forgotten on every single cell. So you get to know it in this guy. Um, I have forgotten every single time to label. I don't even know how to label it. Um, let's just put it down here. Cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is cell juice. The stuff inside the cell membrane that everything floats in. That's all cytoplasm. Now, being a... Um, physio, human physiology person, I don't tell anybody, but I think human physiology is my favorite class ever. I really love human anatomy. And when I teach this class, I really love general biology. So I don't know how I choose, but physio is really cool. And in physio, we look at the cytoplasm and we call it intracellular fluid. That makes sense. Yes. And we abbreviate ICF. In a single-celled critter, the intracellular fluid is what they maintain. It's their guts. In a multi multicellular critter, we have extracellular fluid that we maintain. Our blood plasma and we have interstitial fluid. And we'll talk about the different fluid compartments in multicellular critters. Um, but that cytoplasm is really important and it's different than the environment. If it wasn't different than the environment, then why even bother having a cell? Okay, so cytoplasm, we find it everywhere. On my list here, I have us talking about the endomembrane system next, but I'm not exactly sure why we need to do that again. So we'll do it anyway. I'll be right back.